Mornings are tough. Around here we get up and we have four different species of animals to feed. Two humans, little ones. Two dogs. Four hermit crabs. And nine baby squirrels. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we are at home and in case the intro or title to the video didn't tip you off, we're talking all about squirrel rehabbing today. And we're at home because of the coronavirus, there is literally nowhere else we can be right now. And you know, starting a YouTube channel right before a pandemic was probably not the best idea. I've had worse ideas. But let's get back to talking about the squirrels. First, a little bit of a disclaimer. We want you to know that every squirrel in this video is currently being rehabbed. And we make that point because we don't want you to get encouraged by this video to go out and start trapping squirrels and bring them in as pets. That'd be a terrible idea. We really want this video to kind of inspire and encourage you to get involved with animal rehabbing. Either you, your family members, children, they can all get involved. Everyone in our house is a certified animal rehabber. Our daughter actually just finished her own animal rehabbing class. As you'll see in the video, she helps us out a lot with our day-to-day -day activities. Maybe we should tell them why some animals need rehabbing. So good idea. In the case of squirrels, they are actually born hairless and completely blind. So if something happens to the mother, or if they fall out of a tree during spring cleaning, they are completely helpless. And that's where animal rehabbing comes into play. All right, so here we have our phase one setup area. It's essentially a tabletop, and it's where we keep our youngest squirrels. Close by, we have our cleaning supplies, our towels, other supplies like syringes, scales, and antibiotics that we use most commonly. Phase one I like to think of as the most intense part. There's a lot of different steps that you have to do. Every time you feed them, you have to weigh them so you know how much formula you have to give them. And speaking of formula, it's definitely a certain cocktail that we make every time. We actually mix certain things together. You'll learn specifically about the different ingredients when you take a rehab class. The reason I say this is it's not just going out and giving them milk that you have in your refrigerator. That can make things worse. Here we have them in our smallest critter keeper. As you can see, it's just a simple box with some holes in it. We threw in some limbs to give them something to play with. When it's time to eat, you have to weigh them. And with that information, plus the information you get in your rehabbing class, you'll know exactly how much to feed them. While feeding, we usually use small 3 ml syringes. The smaller syringe helps decrease the chance that they're going to aspirate the formula. Usually while we feed them, we hold them in small towels because something about feeding really makes them want to poop. And man, they poop like it's their job. Phase two is where they get advanced to larger cages. It's here where they can really gain an appreciation for moving around, climbing on larger sticks, and it's also where we have an opportunity to advance their diet. They go from a strict formula diet to now starting to incorporate acorns and leafy vegetables. Phase three, the final step, is when we start to incorporate them into our outside cages. Here they continue to be weaned from formula. They get most of their food and nutrition from water and solid foods. And the outside cages gives them the benefit to get accustomed to the sights and sounds of their soon to be natural environment. Specifically predator sounds that they need to start hearing and learning how to avoid. I made this so they could really have ample space to move around. At this point, they are completely weaned off formula. They're totally fine with solid foods and water. I even built in a small squirrel door, humble brag. So throughout the day, they can come and go as they please. And usually they'll come back at night and we shut the door to keep them safe from predators. However, after a few weeks, ultimately they become increasingly comfortable and they don't come back. And they have been fully rehabbed at that point. So that's it, a brief look into our squirrel rehabbing adventures. We hope you gained some insight into the whole process and more importantly, perhaps some interest in rehabbing wild animals. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be squirrels. You can rehab foxes, opossums, birds. There are even rehabbers out there who rehab bats and snakes. There's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet. 
The best thing to do if you find a wild animal is just to leave it alone. If after 30 minutes or an hour it's still in need, you can put it into a shoebox with some holes in it, put it in a dark, quiet place, and contact your local rehabber. A simple internet search and you'll find one close by. To finish up this video on a side note, at the beginning I said we had two dogs, but we actually had three. Our oldest dog, Kona, was 11 years old and she got sick as we were filming and unfortunately she passed away. I was told as a child that heaven is a place of complete happiness and if it takes your dog to be there to be happy, well, then your dog will be there. On that note, thanks for the memories, Kona, and we'll see you on the other side.